Uh, we're actually going to switch gears a little bit and talk about uh, Half-Life. So a year into developing Half-Life, your company decided to do a bottom-to-top complete redo. Right, what did you see during, like, at that point when you decided to redo it? I mean, what were you looking at that you saw needed improvement? Um, well, we had, when, uh, when Mike and I started the company, um, there, it was a really specific point in time in not only in the, in the game space or the PC game space, but even in the first person action space where, you know, Doom had come out. I think it, there was something like 300, uh, Doom clones that came out subsequently, you know, and uh a lot of a lot of the products that came out were you know this is something I, I was actually talking with Tony Goodman about this last night Tony was the founder of ensemble uh, uh, studios and I was talking you know it's something that as a game designer you sort of understand the relationship that the designer has with you and we're talking about certain games where it's clear that the designer really has a lot of contempt for the player that the the role that they're assigning to you, the reactions they're expecting from you are essentially very dismissive and, you know, they treat you as kind of stupid. Um, and the role that a lot of the first person action games back in 1996 had were to put people as sort of all powerful uh, butchers in a shooting gallery. And we thought that the thing that was the potential for the genre was being missed. And we felt that what we remembered about playing Doom was not this sense of omnipotence, but this sense of terror, right? I mean, I didn't even know what the flashing light meant. I just knew it was bad, right? <laughs> and the creepy you know, sounds and the, yeah, you can't see anything, yeah. I had this realization when I was playing Doom, it was like two o'clock in the morning, and I was like, I'm scared. And I was like, I haven't been scared in a really long time. Like, I'm an adult, I'm, it's, Seattle, how scared can you be? And here I was, I was genuinely frightened and was reaching the point where I just didn't want to keep playing. I was sort of simultaneously enjoying it tremendously, but also really having a strong emotional reaction. And, and so when we were thinking about what we wanted to do with Half-Life, it was like, we didn't want to do something again, which was uh, sort of marginalizing both the genre and marginalizing the, the, the customer experience. But a year in, we looked at it and said, okay, we had a lot of great ideas, but you know, we have a plan between here and getting it out the door, but that plan doesn't have any room for actually achieving what it is that we had set out to do in the first place. So we're gonna have to sort of bite the bullet and, um, and take longer to do it. Um, so uh, Ken Williams and Scott Lynch, who was actually at Sierra on, online at the time, were, were, uh, were actually pretty great about uh, letting us spend more of our own money, <laughs> which believe it or not, sometimes can be a challenge uh, with publishers. Uh, and you know, everybody on the team responded. It was sort of like the first time we had to actually make a real choice as an organization, right? We had to actually say, are we gonna be serious about trying harder to do things? Or are we just gonna punch out, you know, another, uh, you know, carbon copy of all of the other kinds of games. And uh, that's why we ended up doing it. It was also, you know, in other words, I'm saying it wasn't just a creative choice, but it was also something of an organizational choice because it's those kinds of decisions that end up uh, teaching everybody in the, remember we were a new team, we'd never worked together. Well, some of us had worked together before, but we as a group had never shipped anything together. And it's one of the ways that everybody sort of agrees, this is what we're gonna be about. You know, when push came to shove, we went, did we do X or did we, did we do Y? And if you do X, everybody remembers it. If you do Y, everybody remembers it. And it shapes people's expectations of, of the future behavior of, uh, of their colleagues and of their company. And while you guys were making the decision to just re, revamp it and redo it, I mean, did you have the discussions of worries of what could go horribly wrong if you decided to redo it versus just letting it go out? Uh, I think we, uh, I think we just kind of said, this is what we're going to do. And, you know, it's kind of hard to game everything out. And we just said, look, we're going to, we're going to do something we all are proud of. If we're going to fail, we're going to fail trying to fight the 
trying to do the thing that we'd set out to do. We're not going to fail doing the thing that we sort of were trying to react to and uh, thought was a, a bad choice. Okay. You know, it's more fun to go down fighting 